coming up, I give you an update on the solar power system for my camping trailer, and also maybe some of the changes I might make for in the future. That's all on the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. If content like that interests you, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's on patreon.com slash KB9VBR antennas. Well, a few months ago, I added a permanent solar system to my teardrop camping trailer. You can see a full installation video on that. I'll put a link in the video description below. Also, we'll kind of pop it up here uh, for you to click on. Uh, but basically, uh, the solar system consists of three main components. The solar panel, which is a 180 watt uh, panel mounted to the roof rack of the trailer. A charge controller, an MPP charge controller uh, created by DIYSolarForYou.com. And also a, a battery, and I'm using a 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It's a Renogy battery. And all links to all of these products, like I said, we'll put in the video description below. And we've been, run, like I said, I've been running it for a few months now since installing it in early April. And I've kind of learned a few things and I've added a little bit along the way. And I thought I'd kind of give you an update of what's going on with the solar system, the good, the bad, and what I may do in the future. So let's open up the back of the trailer and I'll take you a rundown of what's going on with my uh, solar powered system. So the way the solar system works is I got the panel mounted on the roof and its power cable runs down into the uh, main cabin and then into the galley where if I pull this counter out, you can see uh, the rest of the components. And that's where the battery, the 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery is located, uh, the MPP charge controller and uh, the power distribution box. And everything works well and it generates power and it's, it, it's, a, it's a great setup. And now the reason why I put solar into this trailer is mainly uh, because of this. I added a, a, an electric or 12 volt uh, compressor style refrigerator to the, uh, to the trailer. And the reason I did that is basically uh, for convenience. Uh, I don't like having to go out and get ice if I use ice packs, you know, the ice packs only last for a couple of days and then I got to figure out how to keep the, uh, the food cold and decided that if I go with a compressor style refrigerator, I can keep the food fresher longer because it stays at a more consistent temperature. And also, I don't need to get ice. This particular model, this is the Alpa, Alpa Cool. It's the T50 and um, it was very, um, very specifically, I had to um, uh, choose this cooler because its dimensions fit into my available galley space. So there's a lot of these little compressor refrigerators on the market in all different price ranges and configurations and sizes, but it took a little bit of digging around to find uh, the right one that kind of kind of fit the space. And this works really well. Uh, power consumption wise, you know, it, it when it runs, it runs for about a 20 minute cycle and the number of 20 minute cycles it runs an hour is really dependent on how warm it is. Uh, because if the exterior temperature is warmer, this is gonna take more energy to run to keep the interior cooler. And that's part of the reason why I've got this Reflectix uh, wrapped around the, the, uh, the cooler is just to kind of give it a little bit of extra insulation so that it, it's, it doesn't have to cycle as often. And that does work to a certain degree. Um, when it's running, it consumes up to about two and a half amps of power. Uh, when it's in sort of its standby mode, its power draw is negligible. So um, if we can keep it, if we can keep its exterior temperature down, um, it's going to be more efficient and it's going to have less of a load on the battery. If it gets to be a really hot weekend, then it's going to consume more power and I need to be able to generate more power in order to um, keep the system uh, happy. And that's really the, that's one of the challenges that I've come into with the solar power system. Um, if we're in full sun, we can generate a lot of power because that's a 180 watt panel and it'll do, you know, it'll, it'll put out 180 watts or just a, a little over 11 amps of power. 
if we get into a cloudy day like today, you know, this is a great day for a recording video because I don't have a lot of shadows to worry about. Not such a good day for making power. But um, with this controller still, with this charge controller and this panel, it is this MPPT controller is still able to produce power and I'm, gener I'm still generating about an amp of energy, which is, a not, to, is a not enough to keep the cooler running, it's enough to kind of extend my battery life. And that's one of the other challenges we've got. With a 50 amp hour battery, you sort of have to be, uh, you, know, uh, you know, how much you know, a power you've, you've got, standby power you've got available. Because um, if you can't keep it charged, you're going to consume more of your stored energy and that's going to shorten your overall stay. Uh, some of the campsites I've been in have been very uh, shady and I haven't been able to generate some enough power, but some of them have been very sunny and by um, early afternoon, you know, the battery is full, is full and it's been a, it's been a great weekend. Um, which kind of brings me into the other point that I wanted to make with the solar system is knowing what your state of charge is and your capacity overall. And what I did is after the solar install and using the system for a couple of times, I realized that the display on the controller wasn't enough information to really tell me what my battery state is, what its state of charge is. So I added another piece of, of technology, and that is a, a, a power shunt. And what the power shunt is, is it, uh, it goes on to the negative lead from the battery to everything else. So the shunt can monitor amp hours in, amp hours out, and make calculations once it knows you know your full state of charge of the battery it can it can track the number of amps that go out of the system do some calculations and tell you what the state of the charge is to your battery uh, there's all different types of shunts on the market in all different price ranges many of them will have little displays that mount uh, on on the wall or something like that i went with a little bit more um, smaller version and i'm using the victron smart shunt uh, instead of a display, it has a little Bluetooth app that goes on your phone and I can pull up the app and I can see the state of the charge of the battery. I can see the number of amps that I've consumed. Um, it can calculate how many amps that I've charged in and looking at this display on how much I've put into the system, the shunt and how much has been consumed, I can kind of infer on, you know, how well my system is performing overall. But the important part is, is it'll do calculations and tell me what the state of the charge is of the battery. So I'll know that um, roughly this system is gonna consume about 22 to 24 amp hours a day, depending on the weather, you know, what the temperature is outside. Um, if, I get a, if I get sun, then more power will go into the system and then I'll be able to extend my battery life. If I get less sun, then more of my stored energy is going to be is going to be used, and my my overall stay or or battery life is going to be is going to be decreased. So we found that camping in a really shady spot, I may only produce nine or ten amp hours of power going into the system. Um, bounce that off the uh, 22 to 24 that I can make, you know, that I consume overall. And you can see that over two or three days, your battery's total state of charge is going to decrease to a point where, you know, after a three-day weekend, as we're pulling out of the campsite, my battery might only be down to 25%, which is probably okay for a three-day weekend. And once we get on the road, you know, we're going to get lots, we're going to collect lots of power because we're going to be in full sun. Uh, but that's, I think that that's the important component that was really missing from the initial solar install that I'm glad I added on was that smart shunt. And the Victron smart shunt has worked admirably in that case because I can watch uh, power consumption, I can see um, it can graph trends, and I get, you get a really good handle on where your state of charge is of the battery at any time.
Uh, one of the other concerns with the charge controller was noise, and that's the reason why I went with the um, DIY Solar for You charge controller uh, because it was uh, highly resistant to generating RF hash or noise. And for the most part, that's true. That charge controller is very quiet. Um, I can't hear it on the HF bands at all, even if I've got my radio uh, transceiver plugged into this battery. Uh, I can't pick up any discernible noise as it's charging the system. Uh, what I do find though is I'm getting noise from the refrigerator. When that compressor kicks in, I can, I can sense some RF hash. Uh, unplugging the refrigerator when I'm operating works quite well, so I can just unplug it for a half hour or so, so that it's not creating any noise or any hash. Do my thing, plug it back in, all is well. Finally, you know, let's talk about um, what I would probably change. And I, I think, you know, when you look at solar power systems, you gotta, you, you, you gotta think of two things. You think of your size of the panel, how much power it can generate, and the size of the battery, how much power can you store. And if you've got a small battery, you can maybe adding a bigger panel could keep your battery charged, so your state of charge is higher overall. But really, um, large, I think a larger battery bank gives you a, a, a longer overall higher state of charge, and then you can get by with um, smaller, smaller panels. Now this, of course, you need to also consider what your um, needs are capacity-wise. You know, you need to know how much energy you're gonna consume on a daily basis. You know, once I figured out I, I need 22 to 24 amp hours a day, you know, looking at my 50 amp hour battery, you know, maybe that's, maybe I need something a little bit bigger. Uh, 180 watt panel is plenty fine to charge a 50. It's even, I think it's even um, well enough to charge a 100 amp hour battery because if I'm in full sun, in a few hours I can be fully recharged. But if I'm in a larger RV, and I've got more power needs, more lights. I gotta run fans. I gotta run maybe an, uh, another appliance. Then I'm gonna need. I'm gonna probably need to add more batteries and also add more panels. So, and I, I don't think there's any exact rules on how much you need. You know, battery-wise, so panel-wise, it's probably cheaper to at this point to add more panels than it is batteries uh, because 100 amp hour batteries are expensive and you can, and you can add um, panels for about a dollar a, a dollar a watt or a dollar, a, you know, so uh, if you, uh, as long as you can, as, as long as you can generate, you know, keep the, keep the state of charge going throughout the day and then at night you've got enough stored capacity to get you to the next day you can probably get by with a smaller battery. But if you're in situations where you're going to be parked in an extended time in, say, a shady spot, then adding more battery life is going to really increase your overall ability to stay in that spot for a longer period of time. Just kind of think of, think of it that way in choosing your battery versus your, versus your panel size. So what I change? Well, a bigger battery. I think with a 100 amp hour battery, I would have a lot more, you know, length of time that I can spend outside, which would make a big difference, uh, especially if I'm in a shadier spot. If, um, as I get down to the shoulder seasons, you know, into the fall or early spring, when the sun is lower in the horizon, so I can't generate as much power, uh, given, you know, the amount of time during the day. Uh, a, a larger a larger capacity battery will help even that out uh, a, a lot. Uh, problem though is where my battery is located now in the galley, it's going to be difficult to stick a bigger battery in there. 50, a 50 amp hour battery fits nice, a 100 amp hour battery is going to be bigger and it's going to be a very tight fit. I think the situation there would be to move this whole setup, the hot charge controller and the battery to the front of the trailer into the utility box and cordon off a space 
in that box for the uh, for the battery system. And I've seen other teardrop comp um, owners that have used the same TC teardrop trailer, put their large batteries in the box up front, and um, and then run all of the power to the back. And that would be so that would certainly be a worthy option. If I'm going to move to a 100 amp hour battery, we're going to have to reconfigure the whole solar system so that battery storage is in the front and um, and then we can still keep the power distribution in the back. So uh, that's probably looking in the future uh, for the next step would be a larger battery. So that's it. That's my solar power system for uh, our TC Teardrops uh, camping trailer. Uh, like I said, to recap, we're using the 180 watt uh, Bouge RV solar panel, the DIY Solar for You charge controller, a Renogy 50 amp hour battery, and uh, the Victron Smart Shunt all running into the uh, Blue Sea uh, charge uh, distribution box. I'm going to put links for all of this in the in the video description below, and also the link for the initial solar install video, so you can see how all of these pieces parts come together. Well, do you have any questions about my uh, solar power install, how everything is running, um, or if I missed anything? We'll leave them in the comments below. We'll filter through those and. Um, uh, answer your questions and we'll keep this discussion going. Who knows, maybe your next, maybe your question will end up in our Your Questions Answered live stream. For more articles and information for uh, VHF, UHF antennas for sale, check out my website www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Uh, the algorithm really enjoys it if you do two things for me, like and subscribe. You can also share it with your friends. Uh, I'm sure they're going to want to see this too. And also check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's on patreon.com slash kb 9 vbr antennas. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.